What is up, guys? <clears throat> Welcome to the Transparency. Happy Thursday. Hope you guys are doing well. Um, going to keep our eye on the prize this morning, this afternoon, this evening, wherever it is that you are listening from. This is a boom. This is the Brian Drake <clears throat> murder case out of Idaho. I came across Brian Drake's uh, case uh, due to the Idaho 4. Gary Tolson involved in both the Idaho 4 case and Brian Drake's case that's uh, out of Bonner's Ferry. So, um, again, thank you guys for being here. <clears throat> Put in a bunch of requests. Got some stuff back at the beginning of December. They gave me some stuff back on a CD-ROM. Yes, CD-ROM. Who gives stuff away on CD-ROMs? Well, Bonner County gives stuff away on CD-ROMs. So I had to pull out my old laptop, fire that puppy up, be able to put in the CD player, and then start going to town on some stuff. Well, when I had opened this up, I had realized that, you know, I was very thorough in my request what I wanted. And I said I wanted any and all communication that had to do with the dispatch because it was a transfer, allegedly. And it started and originated the 911 call from the Brian Drake homicide, allegedly started in Kootenai County out of Hayden because he was on the phone with his wife at the time that he was shot, allegedly. This is per her, her statements. And that when she was on the phone with him, he yells out that he was shot through the window and then she – he goes unconscious and then she calls 911. And so it's it begins with a with an alleged 7:29 p.m. 7:28 p.m. phone call where she calls 911 and since she was in Hayden, which is right there where Cordelina is, um that's Kootenai County. That that dispatch then had to send it to Bonner County, which is in Sandpoint. And then Bonner County sent it to Boundary County, which is in Bonner's Ferry. So that's how this all came about. And that's what they alleged happened. And um, But the issues were is that during this case, I noticed that in the discovery process, they were not coughing up the original 911 call, then they weren't putting the time of the call out there when Jennifer Drake would have made this phone call. And it's like, well, that's the time that this whole thing kicks off because if she says she got off the phone with her husband right after he was shot, right? But she doesn't hear gunshots. She doesn't hear the window, you know, break or anything like that. Um, and yet he was shot through the window uh, Brian Drake allegedly never calls 911, even though based off of the autopsy and everything, uh, experts would have said that he would have had uh, plenty of time to use his cell phone if he, in fact, had his cell phone to make that call. There is no reason, you know, you're not going unconscious right away. That's not what happened. Um, so then there's all this, you could say, secretive stuff about this 911 transfer. What the heck's going on? So much so that at the preliminary hearing, once they arrested six months later, Dan Moore, they then have a preliminary hearing, October 2nd, 2020, and they introduce or try to introduce a 911 call. But the way that they have to introduce this 911 call is they call Jennifer Drake to the stand. They don't play the 911 call yet. They just ask her, you know, some questions and she says, yeah, I was on the phone with my husband at this time. And, and then um, I hung up the phone and I called 911, but they don't ask her what time they don't ask her how she knows this. They don't ask her if it was on her phone, nothing at the preliminary hearing during cross-examination that wouldn't come up either. They then play this alleged 911 call only to have it stopped within two seconds when the defense attorney has an outburst and says, wait a second, that's not the call. Stop that. Stop playing that. That's not it. Stop. And then was like yelling at the prosecutor, like, what the heck are you playing? You know? And so he apologized. He apologized to the courts. So to this day, we have no idea what was played in that courtroom. 
except for the fact that a 911 call was never played during the preliminary hearing. And the prosecutor went as far as to the evidence was admitted by, by both parties stipulating to it, but only right before they rested their case at the preliminary hearing, do they then pull it out of evidence. They, they say, we're going to take back that 911 call. So the only thing they admitted during a preliminary hearing for this case was an autopsy report. No expert witness testified. The only people that testified was Jennifer Drake for all of maybe 12 questions. And then two police officers. One was an ISP detective named Mike Van Leuven. And the other was the police assistant chief, Marty Ryan. Wow, is all I have to say. So I was determined. And this is the breaking news that I could, I, and I pushed my lives back from yesterday to, to do all this stuff last night that I wanted to organize. I was determined to find out what truly transpired in this alleged, you know, why didn't Brian Drake call 911 himself? Like, what are you doing? If you just got shot, you wouldn't just be dead instantly. That's not what happened. You have your cell phone. Why wouldn't you call 911 yourself? Why wouldn't your wife be telling you? to call 911. Now, according to Jennifer, it was so quick that he was shot and then he was just unconscious like that. And I laugh because go ask any expert that would have read that autopsy and ask them how long he would have had before he would have been dead because he internally bled out. He he basically drowned in his own blood. Um, and every single one of those experts is going to tell you to take a stopwatch in time at least three to five. I mean, that's being kind, three to five minutes. Well, then I said to myself, okay, if I know I was, I would be telling my spouse, my friend, whoever I was on the phone with to call 911, I'd be calling 911 then too. So we'd have like, you know, we need to get help or, you know, then if you come across Brian Drake's, um, body it never came up and it was never asked why is there why is his back his shirt covered in debris debris okay no chiropractor has dirty nails no chiropractor has dirt all over their back okay now you go and look at the outside of his office why is there's all like he's there's a there's bush area hold on one second that's my air fryer <laughs> All right, back at it. Sorry, man. We're making some wings over here. Anyways, so I was determined, um, like I said, in the back of his building, there's brush back there. Um, his car was really parked close to the building. And uh, by all accounts, it looks like uh, Brian Drake at some point was laying on his back outside. Okay? So... Then we finally get our hands on the sacred 911 call. And it it is received in Bonner County, which is the midway between Hayden and Bonner's Ferry at 7:29 p.m. in 5 seconds. Okay? But this was alleged to have transferred from Kootenai County first. Okay? I do a FOIA request. I do a public right to know all like that type of request for Kootenai County from 6 to 7 p.m. And in fact, I asked for every dispatch call that came in from 7 to 8 p.m. And every call 911 wise that would have went out. And during 7 to 8 p.m., I specifically asked for any 911 calls made by Jennifer Drake. I don't even give Jennifer Drake's cell phone number. I just say any call made by Jennifer Drake between 7 and 8 p.m. And then all of, like, I want the audio, I want the CAD notes. I get a response back that says, there is no audio known to exist. There is no audio known to exist. And then I get 47 pages of every call 
that Kootenai County took between 7 and 8 p.m. Now, I do on with boundary, and then I realized that nobody had done one with Bonner County. So at the beginning of this past month, I do a one of the most detailed FOIA slash, you know, public requests. And I write <clears throat> that I am looking for every correspondence between dispatchers that has to do with I get a number, like that's an actual call number because I had called Bonner County and I talked to one of like the dispatch managers and was explaining some things and she was explaining some things back to me. So then that's why I had the CD-ROM with now eight different, you know, clickable recordings from the CAD dispatch to include a 911 call that came in and then that call in its entirety that was also transferred to Boundary County. Okay. <clears throat> I know it seems very <clears throat> confusing, but it's truly not. If you were on the phone with somebody and you weren't really where they were because you didn't live in the same area or you just, and you called 911 from where you're at, it's going to be a transfer type process. But there is something that's going to be there. Um, and that's going to be the CAD notes then the call, obviously, and everything that goes with it to include your own personal, um, if you called from your phone, you have, you know, the log from your phone. You have also have if your phone was then turned in for a forensic download, a Cellbrite. So <clears throat> I'm going to play for you um, at 7.30. In five seconds, this is a this is the call that comes in to Bonner County. Okay. Nine one one. What is the address of your emergency? Please put a sixty at eleven South Main Street. Okay. Sixty. Okay, I, I understand. And now I couldn't understand what you said. Can you say the address again? 6811 South Main Street, Suite B. It's at Drake Chiropractic of North Idaho. Okay, and what city is that in? It's in Bonnesbury, Idaho. Okay. Okay, you've reached Bonner County, so I've got to get you over to... Um, okay, so bear with me for just one second. What's going on there? I was on the phone with him and he, he was fine and then all of a sudden he yelled and said, oh, oh my gosh, I think I was just shot. Somebody just shot through the window into my side and then all of a sudden he dropped the phone and he wouldn't answer. Okay, wouldn't answer. hold on for me just a second, okay? Hold on. <laughs> Is he conscious? I, I think he may not be. If he was conscious, he would have called me that. Are you able to do CPR on him? I'm not there. I mean, I'm in I This is the business up there. I'm two hours away. This is, this is Bonner County with a transfer for a possible gunshot at 6811 South Main Street Suite B at a chiropractor's office in Bonner Ferry. Yes. Okay. And the caller is calling from... Yes. She states that there was a... She spoke to a man who thinks that he just got shot, and then... I was on the phone with my husband. And then he... Something just hit me, something horrible. I feel 
like a gunshot just hit my side. And then all of a sudden, it was like, and I kept yelling and trying to yell at him. I'm telling you, if he was conscious, he would have called me back. Okay, okay, right, yeah. Okay, I got that. It's, uh, he is at 6811 South Main Street, Suite B. It's straight okay. chiropractic with North Idaho. Okay, and what's his name? I'm his wife. Okay, and what's your name? What is your name, ma'am? I'm going to send people up there right now to check on him, okay? Good. I'm going to send people up there right now, okay? Thank you. Do you guys call me back? Of course. Is this a good phone number? Yes. Please call me as soon as possible. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye. Okay. So that's the first call that, um, well, that's the, that's the Bonner <clears throat> County call. And from the beginning of a phone call, that's all, like, I played it in its entirety. During a transfer, you're normally going to hear um, a person on the other end when it's transferred saying, just like how the Bonner County dispatch said to the Boundary County person, hey, this is Bonner County with a transfer. <clears throat> this is the address. Okay, caller, go ahead and start. Okay? So, now, <clears throat> during Jennifer Drake's um, interview with police, this call happens in, I have the CAD notes, and they sent out, a 911 was sent out, and they sent all units to 6811 Main Street. And all units were sent there at 734 p.m. Okay. Now explain to me how at 744 p.m. Jennifer Drake gets a phone call from Boundary County Sheriff's. It's the dispatch. Calling her. And during her interview, she says, yeah, I got a call back from, from them. And they said that the medics were with him and that they needed his they needed me to give him give them his cell phone number and she's like and i didn't understand why they needed his cell phone if they were like with him why would they need his cell phone okay and it made no sense the sheriff needs his cell phone numbers you know his work one his other one what's the numbers and um but the medics are with him but she they couldn't tell me anything more <clears throat> that's what she says happens at 7 44 okay now I got the dispatch and the next call, hear it for yourself. This is at 7.50 p.m. Bonner County Dispatch calls Boundary County. This is the specifics I wanted. Right here at 7.50 p.m., Boundary County tells the Bonner County Dispatch, we have not located When they're saying the patient, that's Brian Drake. They haven't located him yet. And, and I said to myself, wait, I knew that's what they were saying, but how could you not locate somebody when you have an address and that you're supposed to respond to 6811 Sweet B, okay? And you would just go right in the building because it was unlocked, all right? They don't find Brian Drake until 7.54 p.m. Now, 
How are you telling and calling the wife at 744 saying that medics are with him? Now I got my hands on the video surveillance in the area. I have these cocksuckers circling his building at his building and there's the, the medics are there. Then they were told to go stage and they are just waiting around doing nothing, making no entry into 6811. Sweet B. It isn't until an officer at 754 says that he was walking down the alley and happened to look into the happened to see the window that was shot out. And then from there, they see that Brian Drake was laying on the floor. Allegedly, this is there. But mind you, there's no body cams that surface until they are about to go into the building after all of that and kick in a door. But now it gets better. I then play the third recording that I got. I said, oh, wow, I have eight recordings here. Oh, I wonder what all this could be. Then I go to recording three. Now, this was this was at 824. Uh-huh. There is a code black. Oh, wow. Okay. So here, Boundary County then rings out to Bonner County. Boundary is where Bonner's Ferry is. Rings back out to the Bonner lady. At 824, this transaction's happening. And says, hey, you wanted an update. So it's 824. Uh, yeah, it's a code black, which means dead. To Code Black, hey, we need some information on the guy that owns the building here. Can you run, you know, this name or this building and find out the name and a number so we can call? Um, and it was for purposes as far as being in there and whatnot. Um, if you can get permission, then as far as like search warrants go, things like that. So then, now, that's at 824. At 8... 39 p.m. Tiffany, the woman that I talked to who is in charge of the dispatch at Bonner County. She now is going to make a call back at 839. And this is Van Buren, voice 312 at 839. Take a listen. Tiffany Van Buren, she's the one in charge. It's a male dressed in all black on foot, as far as we know. And this is Tiffany from Bonner calling back to Boundary at 839 to ask, because we have some units, do you want our assistance in anything? And I should have the sheriff calling in um, any minute now. Um, I'll let him know that... Okay. 
Okay, total normal. Makes total sense to me. When I hear this next um, recording, I about lost my shit. Enjoy. This is at 8.50 p.m. Okay, so this woman in Bonner decides because somebody had told her at some point here, at some point between her transferring this call that she just thought originated in Bonner, somebody had told her that it obviously A, it was a code black, there's death, and that, oh yeah, that was a transfer from Kootenai County. And she's like, what? She had to have said this to herself at some point. What do you mean this was a transfer from Kootenai County? I was the one that took that call, and it was just a 911 call that came in, and I answered it. Nobody said it was a transfer. I wasn't on the phone with anybody from Kootenai County. That caught this woman completely off guard to the point that literally at 8.50, she decides that she's going to make her own call over the dispatch line to Kootenai County to to say this, the, the following, what you guys are listening to right here. She, this person says, uh, yes, it looks like it was transferred to you. Do you have any questions? Now, what in the world did you just look at to say that? Because wait for it. Now the girl in Bonner is going to say, yes, well, actually, it's turned into an ordeal. And so here we go. Coming for that ass. it was transferred from you guys just a little bit ago until just a little bit ago. Okay. Now when I made my call to the, to Bonner County originally, I played stupid and I acted like, Oh my God, I was driving around. So I don't know if the call came to you guys, if it bounced off of your tower, if you guys remember that episode. Okay. Because I wanted to get as much information as I possibly could because I knew this was a fuck job. Okay. Now <clears throat> listen very carefully to the rest of this conversation. This woman in Bonner basically, in my opinion, had a conversation with somebody in her dispatch office in Bonner County, and she was adamant, I believe, to this person and said, no, this was not a transfer. I took the call, okay, and there was nobody that talked to me in the other line. Nobody said, hey, I got a transfer from you from Kootenai County. Here's this woman. It literally, the woman that took the original call in Bonner goes, 911, what's your emergency? And Jennifer Drake just starts, you know, talking, right? <clears throat> Without the person in Kootenai County ever saying a word that this is a transfer. Now, immediately what you start doing is you do trace locate, you do a rapid SOS, you do, um, like you're looking to triangulate where the caller is calling from, okay? 
Now, let's listen to the rest of this. It's turned into quite the ordeal. I'm not sure what she said to you on the phone. Um, but we ended up transferring her to Boundary County because that's where it's at. But uh, right. there's a legit shooting. And so, um, what is? can you tell me what the address is where she was calling from? <laughs> oh, um, oh, you know what? I remember looking it up because it was so bizarre. And it was. Oh, daddy! Actual numbers, though, because uh, I had to do a lot and long on it. She had to do a lat and long on it, lat, like latitude and longitude coordinates, okay? This is what this woman is saying to this other woman, okay? The woman in Kootenai County is now on the phone and over a dispatch line with the woman from Bonner because the Bonner woman's like, okay, this is an ordeal now. There was an actual shooting. We didn't realize that it was a transfer until just some, you know, a little bit ago. So she's calling up the, the Kootenai County people to say, hey – where was this woman calling from? Okay. And I think the reason this woman is doing this is because she basically got into it with somebody in her office saying that it wasn't a transfer. Okay. But we'll see. We'll see what happens here. Ready? She says, it was a while ago. Let me see. Do you have a timeline? Like so that she can start looking up the Cooney County call. Okay. Yes, the original call came in at 1930. 1930, okay. The original call came in at 1930. Well, was there a second call? The original call. So did she call back? I'm just like, the, well, the original call came in at 1930. You know, here we go. So then the Kootenai County woman is now trying to look up to see. She's going to look just before 730 then. That 1930 is 730. She's going to look just before that in her dispatch notes to, to go and locate this call. Okay. That's what she's doing right now. Then I have to click on another. So then I have to click on this one, which is 53 and so it was like there are seconds that are missing. And it was only 16 seconds. She's looking up something. And then I have to click on another one. And this was 37 seconds. Can you have her number? So. Yeah. Okay, so she can't find it. She's like, do you have her number? The the Kootenai County woman just asked the Bonner Ferry, or the, the Bonner County woman, do you have her number? So she can't locate it, okay? Do you have her number? It is 1930. She says something right there. She's like, do you remember what the first, and she says something right there at the beginning of it. second whoops see what happened here uh, 
Oh, that's her calling. Here we go. Her name is Jennifer Drake, if that helps you at all. Okay, so now, <clears throat> now this is where Lana gets to fucking go to town. This woman, you hear her voice, the Bonner woman. Okay, first of all, <clears throat> she's acting like she's, the, the, the Kootenai County woman's acting like she's looking something up. And she says, can you give me the number? Can you give me the number? You know, the, the name wasn't helping her. So the, she gives her some number, the 512 number. She punches it in. <clears throat> okay, yeah, that really helped. Okay, we'll check this out. And so she's saying the girl at no, at no point gives her a latitude and longitude. There is a long beeping out, which they redact, okay? But the Bonner County woman. So <clears throat> I'm going to use Hector the Projector really quick <coughs> what the woman from cooney county was saying okay yeah give me this information i'm gonna type it all in i'll just use some trigger words i'll use her name i'll use her number and then it's gonna pop up all my cad notes and it's gonna show me where the the call originated from it's gonna give me <clears throat> her coordinates okay but at no time do you ever hear the cooney county woman 
give up coordinates. In fact, what she gives up is just an address, okay? She just gives her an address. She doesn't say these were the coordinates, okay? But that's what she wanted. She wanted the latitude and longitude, and the woman never coughs it up. And she's just, oh, yeah, no, it was a call that came in. It was about the husband. You heard the end of that, okay? Well, I said to myself, well, this is a bunch of fucking bullshit. This is lies. You want to know how I know it? Because I already did Kootenai County, and Kootenai County has no record of this 911 call. Okay, no audio, they said, and no CAD notes. Well, I went one step further when I asked for, I want everything from six to seven. I want every CAD note typed out. It's 47 pages. I got it. Well, here you guys go. I'm going to show you something. If, in fact, Jennifer Drake, and I have the 911 call that was allegedly made to Cooney County, there is no record of it on anybody's cell phone to include Jennifer Drake's. Now, <clears throat> Cooney County has no record of it in its CAD notes. Hold on one second while I grab this. Here we go. Hector the projector bringing it to us. Shared screen. Window. Documents. Here we go. Let me back this out for you guys. Now this is the master call table for Kootenai County. <clears throat> and there was a call at 19:28 and 29 seconds and <clears throat> i have the 911 call that originally that, that allegedly was in kootenai county and then transferred what do you want this and Oh, here, watch out. This call right here is the only call that came in at that time. 1928, okay? And it is for a mother-in-law that fell down. The next call doesn't take place until 1936 hours. There are no CAD notes associated with Jennifer Drake's original call. What that means, ladies and gentlemen is the woman that was talking to the Bonner County dispatch. She fucked up royally or she did this on purpose because you could not possibly be looking up anything to be giving Bonner County any information because it's just, it's not, you don't have anything. You don't have CAD notes because you never entered it into the fucking system. Now, how does that happen, right? Is that even, you know, so let me show you what I mean. What I mean is that Jennifer Drake's cell phone number, there is no outgoing call. So I asked Scott Roeder yesterday. I said, hey, have you ever heard of something like this? How would this happen? There you go, buddy. He said, yeah. He's like, it's very hard to do, but you do it on purpose. This is Idaho. This is Idaho. And I said, so you have to do this on purpose? He says, yeah. I said, okay. Because this is the original, the one from Bonner County. 729 and five seconds. Set a 1930 and two seconds. <clears throat> so we have all this here. But then when you go and you look through all the, the, the Kootenai County stuff, you get this.
you go through 47 pages of every call that was made between 7 and 8 p.m. And you had a couple different people working. So you have the Gifford person, you have, a, oh, there's a Robinson person, but you go through all of these, right? Just like I did. Like here's one at 1939. Okay, we'll check this out. It's not here. So what was that lady looking at when she was giving the Bonner County woman, yeah, I'm confident it had to come from this address. She wasn't looking at anything, okay? Because there is no, there is no report. There, is, there are no CAD notes. So the woman on the phone that is telling the Bonner County woman that it's for sure there, I'm confident because I looked it up and I did a SOS rapid and I did this and I did that. You heard what she was saying. Well, what were you looking at when you did that? Now check this out. So Coonie County has no records of it, no audio. <clears throat> it says record not known to exist in the FOIA request. Because I wanted the CAD notes because of the what this woman was saying. She was so confident because the woman from Bonner County was so confident that it hit off of her tower. That this wasn't a transfer. She wasn't two hours away. None of this makes any sense. It was a very suspicious call. And they're talking about it, okay? Now, I pull up Jennifer Drake's phone records again, and I about died. Here we go. Do you see this call right here? 1932 and 48 seconds. Do you see that call? Okay. Do you see? This call originated 19, 19 29 hours. Um, allegedly in, uh, in Kootenai County. It begins for her at 1930 and two seconds. And then the entirety from when Bonner County call goes out, the 911 call, to boundary, it is three minutes and 34 seconds. Okay. So then I added, I said, how in the world could she be on her cell phone making a 911 call? And at 732, make a call to her husband's, that's what she called him, Adonis. How could she be on the phone with 911 as you guys hear at, but at 732 and 48 seconds she's still on the phone because the 911 call was 3 minutes and 34 seconds if you add 3 minutes and 34 seconds to when the call started it's obviously um 7 30 uh 3 and 38 seconds or 34 seconds but yet, while she's on the phone with the police, right, she manages to make a call to her husband's phone from her cell phone. You see that? 7.32 and 48 seconds. She's on the phone with the police. Now, I'm going to play the 911 call for you guys again. And I want you to listen to something. And Jennifer Drake has a big oops. This is the first call. 911, what is the address of your emergency? Please put a 60 at 11 South Main Street. Okay, 60. Okay, I, I understand. And now I couldn't understand what you said. Can you say the address again? 6811 South 
Main Street, Suite D. It's at Drake Chiropractic of North Idaho. Okay, and which city is that in? It's in Bonner's Ferry, Idaho. Okay. Okay, you've reached Bonner County, so I've got to get you over to, um, okay, so bear with me for just one second. What's going on there? I was on the phone with him, and he, he was fine, and then all of a sudden he yelled and said, oh, and oh my gosh, I think I was just shot. Somebody just shot through the window into my side, and then all of a sudden he dropped the phone, and he wouldn't answer. Okay. He wouldn't answer. Hold on for me just a second, okay? Hold on. <laughs> is he conscious? I, I think he may not be. If he was conscious, he would have called me back. Are you able to do CPR on him? I'm not there. I mean, I'm in I'm, I'm two hours away. This is, this is Bonner County with a transfer. Right there. I'm, I'm, two, I'm two hours away. The dispatcher pauses for a second, okay? All right. Now, ready? For a possible gunshot at 6811 South Main Street, Suite D at a chiropractor's office in Bonner's Ferry. Okay. And the caller is calling from... Okay, that redaction where they say, and the caller is calling from, and then she says whatever she says there, okay? Now, she's clearly giving this Boundary County woman an address, okay? So then why in the world would the Boundary County dispatch woman call Kootenai County to say, hey, can you give me her location if you're saying the location? If you have it, right? Because this Bowner County woman knew something was up, something was sketched, but she was playing dumb when she called the Kootenai County motherfuckers. Just like I did when I called them acting like, oh, if, it, if I was driving in my car, what tower would it hit off if I was here, if I was there, okay? Now, <clears throat> um. What you do in your train as a 911 person, you want somebody to keep talking. Get them to say as much as you can, okay? So that because you go back and you listen to these and they're used in court, all right? So when people say, oh, she's not listening to her, she's having her repeat things, you want that. You want to see if the story changes at all. You want, you want somebody talking, 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 okay? So this call started at 7.32 or 7.30 and two seconds. The total duration of this call, even with the transfer once she calls this, you know, Boundary County, the total duration of the recording is three minutes and 34 seconds. We are at the point right now, I paused it, and it's been going for... Oops. And then he stopped talking to her. It has one minute and 22 seconds left, okay? So it's been going for roughly two minutes. Two minutes and 10 seconds, all right? So take a look at this. She, on her cell phone, because we have the record of this, she, on her cell phone, at 7.32 and 48 seconds, because I'm just trying to break this all down so you guys can know how my brain works, all right? Jen makes the call, basically... It was like this. She was on the phone with Kootenai County for a minute and 30 seconds. 7.30 and two seconds. Uh, boundary gets, or uh, Bonners gets it. Then the total duration of this 911 call, which is the Bonner and Boundary combined, is three minutes and 34 seconds. Okay. This would take you being on the phone to 7 p.m., 7.33 and 36 seconds. 
All right. Jennifer Drake using allegedly the same phone at the 732 mark in 48 seconds of the day while on the phone with the police making this call somehow makes a call to her husband. Hmm. Little fucky, fucky, sucky, sucky. You fucked up, girl. We have a huge fuck up problem right here. So this means you guys are listening to this call right here. While she is on the phone with 911 from her cell phone, allegedly her cell phone, how in the world then can she make a call while on the phone with 911 here to her husband's cell phone at 732 in 48 seconds? Well, let's listen just a little bit further, and I'm going to put us to the point when this would have happened. So we're in two minutes and like 10 seconds because we have, let's see how much time left. The call. And then I was on the phone with my husband. And then he. Okay, so right here, 210. So we have 124 left. Okay. 124. We're looking at. Oh, wait. 124 this way. So it's 730. Two and eight seconds, so we have about 40 seconds to go. Stop talking to her. <laughs> go ahead, call her. He just was on the phone talking. He just got done working. That's my husband. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, he yelled. And he goes, he yelled, ow, ow. And I said, what's wrong? Just, something just hit me. Something horrible. I feel like a gunshot just hit my side. And then all of a sudden, it went like, and I kept yelling and trying to yell at him. I saw you if he was conscious, he would have called me back. Okay, okay, yeah. Okay, I'll go say. <laughs> uh, he is at 6811 South Main Street, Sweet B. It's straight okay. down, I think it's I know. Okay, right here. Here we go. We are, we are at, so this call has been going on at this point for two minutes and 56 seconds. All right. Now, <laughs> ready? 7.30 and two seconds. So you got, you're at 7.32 and 58 seconds. So we got to back it up roughly 10 seconds. Now listen. I'm this way. Okay, what's your name? What is your right there. Right there. And what's your name? She is sidetracked because she realizes that her fucking phone, okay, her phone is what you can do if you have a cell phone, but she didn't have um uh they weren't they weren't iPhone, they were Android users, okay? So if I was to merge a call, so I could be on a call right now with you guys, then I could go to my Apple phone and say, add a call, hit a number by accident, you know, but she realizes something happens because listen right here, when she isn't paying attention, something distracts her, okay? Something distracts her. And she, the, the woman says, what's your name? What's your name? What is your name, ma'am? I am going to send you 
people up there right now to check on him, okay? Good. I'm going to send people up there right now, okay? Thank you. Do you guys call me back? Of course. Is this a good fun where we Boom. Hi. Hi. Yeah, baby. Hold on one second. All right. Um, one second here. I'm going to show you a little something, something else. Okay. So. <clears throat> In her interview, I'm going to close out with this and you guys can go back and digest this all. In her interview, she is asked, and I'm going to show you a piece of paper with it. Hold on. Best part of the show. Here we go. I muted it for a second. Um, mommy? Yeah, baby. All right, right here. You guys know how it is. Two weeks of uh, Christmas break, you just jam it out with your kids and you love every second of it. He's the man. Oh, wait, Jax, you got to give us a um, a joke today. Okay, baby. Take a look at this. Okay, ready? <laughs> Woo wee, daddy. Yeah. I got no idea. Um, how about every Sunday? Okay. When I'm here, mm -hmm. um, every Sunday we do a joke. We do a joke fest. Yeah, but I'll count. I'll count as today though. You want to treat today as Sunday? Yeah. So Sundays are our joke days. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, take a look. This is during her interview. Hmm. <clears throat> She just said the sheriff needs it. She wouldn't tell me if he was alive or dead. And I knew in my heart, if you can't get it from him, it means that he can't speak or they wouldn't tell me anyway. They just said they just need it. They just need his cell number. Okay. They just need a cell number. No. Take a look at this. Ready? So at 744, she gets a phone call from dispatch at 744. And this is what she says transpires, that the medics are with him. They, but they're not telling me if he's alive or dead. They just want to know what his cell number is. Okay. And I just think 
it's so odd. Medics are there and they just, they ju- the sheriff just needs his cell number? Like what? But yeah, so 742, I mean 642, then it happened at 732. Then it happened at 732. What happened at 732? What happened at 732? Oh, I see. You're looking at your phone and your mind slipped you again. This is what happened at 732. Boom, daddy. Pockets give fatter. Okay, honey, you can't even keep your lies straight. That's what happened at 732. But she says, and then it happened at 732. What happened at 732? You called and you, and it went straight to voicemail and you knew that the deed was done because Brian Drake's phone was shut off. Is that what the, is that what, how you knew that it was done and it, and it happened? 732. Yeah, I see that. She doesn't realize when she's being questioned that when you're lying, you just slip up and sometimes the truth just comes with it. Trust me, you want Lana on your team. But yeah, so 742, I mean 642, Hi. that's the first call. Hi. Yeah. You got your joke? Yeah. Okay. That was awesome. Knock, knock. Who's there? Ouch. Ouch, who? Bless you. Oh! <laughs> now that's one for the books, baby now. I'll do one more. Oh, you got a second one? Yeah, okay, you could think about it for a minute. Now, and she's like, 642, then it happened at 732, and I tried calling him back again, and I let it go for like three seconds. She's reading from her phone, just making up the lies, and then another three seconds. It just kept going straight to voicemail, so I knew he was not getting these back-to-back calls when she's doing this does not happen, Jennifer, until, so at 7.44, yours, they're saying, hey, we need a cell phone number. Why were they asking for a cell phone number? Because they couldn't locate your man. They went to 6811. He wasn't in that mother effing room. He was on the, he was on the floor outside in the gravel. Okay, he wasn't put in there in that place yet. That's why they had to keep medics away for the staging. But the the sheriff or somebody had dispatch call her back to say, get the cell phone number, get the cell phone number. Why would you need the cell phone number? Well, we'll get all of that at trial. Because then guess who calls at 748 and 749 back to back calls. See how it's just no seconds there and they're just missed. This is somebody calling Brian Drake seven, um, 748 and 749. But then why is Jennifer Drake calling again at 845 and she called her um, husband's work phone at 846? Then, just to put a stamp on it, um, then Sergeant Van Leuven says, I'd like you to let us download your phone. Are you willing to do that? Why? Because none of it made sense, right? Here you go, Kootenai County. Request delayed. Why? We needed extra time. Then when they finally got it to me, unable to respond for one or more of the following reasons. Right here, Kootenai County says, record not known to exist, no audio. They say that there is no 911 call that ever came into Kootenai County between 7 and 8 or at any time that day by a Jennifer Drake. You know why? Because your fucking woman that did the dispatching that day, I want to know who the person was and how they know Jennifer Drake. Because there is only one way to be able to do what the fuck transpired here. And that woman lied and said where Jennifer Drake was, the Bonner person caught it because Bonner person saw that she was hitting off of a tower in Sandpoint. That's why, you know, it's all going to come out. But I'm going to tell you this right now. You can't get it past me as long as I have the shit. Now, and Jennifer, I'm telling you, if you're not involved, contact me because I'm telling you the popo is who you should be suing. They lied to you at 744. Okay. They did. The medics weren't with him at 744. The medics did not get to your husband until well after eight o'clock. Your husband could have been saved in my opinion. 
I don't know what transpired between the 717 and 726 time frame when you said you were on the phone with him for nine minutes and 15 seconds. It's a very, very long time. And then I thought maybe the reason that there is no 911 call is because you on that phone call called 911 by merging a call during that time frame. So at so at 726, right before you're ending the call, you really didn't end the call. You would just add a call so that you can keep your husband on the phone with you. That's what you would do if you don't want to end your call. You could call 911 by merging a call. I could do add call, call 911, press send. Then when 911 answers, I merge the call. And now you'd have to look at her Android and you'd have to look at if that would be a way to mask a 911 call not coming up in your call log. I'm here to rock it. I'm here to help people that are truly innocent. Dr. Moore is 100% factually innocent. Jennifer Drake, I have no idea what happened, why your son or why your husband was targeted, why he's dead. But I do know that the police were not honest with you. The police are not honest with anybody in that community, and you haven't been honest. And I'm going to tell you why there's one reason in the world and who I would ever cover for in this world, and it would be for my baby boy. So, Jennifer, if you are covering for your son, in my opinion, that's the only thing that makes sense to me as to why you would ever lie if you are not involved with this at all. There's only one reason, and that would be because of your son. Boom. See on the flip side. Thank you guys so much. I will be back later on this evening for those of you guys that digest this and we'll break it down. Wait, mom. Oh, you have your second joke? Yeah. Okay, come on down. Yeah. Wait, knock, knock. Who's there? You. You who? You who? You who? <laughs> I like that one. You who? Oh, I love you. Come here. You said it for me though. Oh, I did. I said it. Ah! I, I kind of said it for you, didn't I? I didn't even realize it though. Because you're the best. Lana, where can I find an overview of this story told honestly? Right here. I'm telling it all honestly. Go find, nobody talks about this case and nobody has any documentation on this case. I bring the case with the documents. So see you soon.